host here at Through the Yarny Curtain, a podcast about my adventures in crafting with yarn. Today is Tuesday, September 10, 2013, and this is episode one. So since this is episode one, of course, I need to tell you a little bit about myself and about my experience with yarn crafting. I currently live in Central Florida, just a little bit north of Orlando. I've been here in Central Florida for about 11 years. Before that, I lived in New England my entire life, first in Connecticut and then in Massachusetts in the Boston area. I am married. I've been married for 10 years to my husband, Chris, and we do not have any children. We have three cats who are being awfully quiet today. They're all sleeping in their little respective domains, but I do record, I am recording in a place where they can reach me, so I'm sure you'll meet them eventually, if, even if it's not in this episode. The first time I ever held knitting needles and knit anything, I was eight years old. It was Christmas. My sister, who is 18 months younger than me, and I, we were the only children at Christmas that year, and I strongly suspect, though I do not remember, that we were driving all of the adults absolutely batty. So my grandmother and her sister, my great aunt Lucy, sat the two of us down and they gave us knitting needles with some stitches on them and showed us how to knit. I still remember those knitting needles. They were the metal kind, something like these, Although the ones that I got from my grandma were probably a little bit smaller than this. These are size 15s. They were the ones that I was using then were probably about 10s or something like that. And they were harvest gold. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny because I don't remember my, either my grandmother or my great aunt Lucy ever knitting themselves. But the only memory I have related to them and knitting is that Christmas when they sat us down with those knitting needles. And I didn't take up knitting then. I didn't t think about knitting again until I was about 18 or 19 years old. And I decided I wanted to learn how to knit, partially because I had that memory. But I didn't live close enough to my grandma or my great aunt Lucy for either one of them to be able to teach me. So I got one of those leisure arts um, flyers from the craft store and I taught myself to knit out of a book. And the first thing that I knit was a pair of slippers that you knit flat and then seamed. And then the next thing that I knit was a cabled baby blanket which was knit in panels and then seamed together. And I knit that for my cousin Cooper. Um, as a birthday present bef uh, before he was born, as a baby present. And um, I don't know if he still has it, I need to ask him, but it's been a while. He's in college now, he's a sophomore in college, so it's been a while since I first knit. And I knit for several years, and then in 2001, I dislocated the ring finger on my left hand. It was actually, it was at an angle from this joint, almost at a 90 degree angle. And I, it was really silly. I was just getting into an elevator and you know how you turn around and when you get in an elevator, I did that to face front and my shoe like caught on the carpet and I started to fall and I reached my hand out to catch myself. Um, and I don't know, I must have hit it in a really weird manner and that's how I just located my finger. And so after that, I did some physical therapy for a couple months to try and fix the finger. Um, and it got a lot better. It's still not, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but when I, if I go like this, like this finger does not touch my palm. It doesn't, I can't bend it as much as I, the other fingers. Um, and so even after a couple of months of physical therapy, when I tried to knit, it was causing me a great deal of pain. And so I thought I was never going to be able to knit again. And so in 2002, when we moved to Florida, I uh, gave away all of my knitting needles and yarn and books and patterns, any, everything that I had. I gave them all away. Um, but then in 2007, I decided to try knitting again and I found that I could do it and it didn't cause my hands any pain and so I started again and I have not stopped 
sense. Knitting the last couple of years have been really hard for my husband and I. Since March 2012, we've lost 13 members of our families, um, four on my side and nine on my husband's side of the family. And as you might imagine, um, that's really stressful and it's changed our lives in many ways. And one of those ways is that I am not currently working. Um, one of the people who passed away early in that back in March of, um, I'm sorry, in April of 2012 was my father-in-law. And so um, I go to New Jersey regularly, <coughs> excuse me, I go to New Jersey regularly to spend time with my mother-in-law and to help her to sort out papers and um, whatever she needs. And when he first passed away, we thought it would be just for a few months that I would be doing that. And um, I, at first I was actually going every other week, but as time has gone on and people have continued to pass away, including three of my mother-in-law's sisters, um, I, that is continuing to be a high priority for us. And so because of that, I'm not employed, and, but I do go up. To New Jersey at least well the goal is one week a month um, and sometimes it's been more than that and sometimes it's been a little bit longer like every six weeks or every two months depending on other things that have been um, going on including this year we had two people who passed away here in Florida one was my grandfather and then um, the husband of one of my I'm sorry the wife of one of my husband's cousins and so uh, because of those deaths, um, my time in between trips to New Jersey was stretched out a little bit. But through all of this, knitting is one of the things that has kept me sane. And I have knit more in the last year and a half than I have in any other comparable period. And I only found knitting podcasts and started watching and listening to knitting podcasts in, I think it was May of this year. So only three or four that's about four months ago, and I just love them. I love to see what all of you are working on and to see what your struggles are and to hear about how you're solving them uh, in your knitting. And so that's really why I decided to do this podcast uh, because I don't, I, it just seems like I can't get enough of the name podcasts. Um, you, everybody's working on different things and everybody has different experiences. And it's a lot of fun to learn from you, and I hope that some of you will be able to learn from me and eventually share with me the things that you're working on, too. Okay, so a little bit about the podcast itself. Um, my plan is to record every 7 to 10 days. I want to do every week, um, but I'm really new to all of this. <laughs> I don't have any prior experience with editing video or making websites or any of the other technical things that are involved in creating the podcast. And so I think, especially in the beginning, there's going to be a big learning curve for me, and so it might take longer. And the lady who came to visit, this is Puck. That's P is in Peter, U-C-K, and he is not named because after a hockey puck, and now he's knocking over the knitting needles, and he is not named after the character in the real world. He is named after the character in Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream because when he was a baby kitten, he was cat hair. He was a mischievous little sprite. Now he is 17 years old and he spends most of his time sleeping, but he can still be a troublemaker. So, um, about the podcast. I, I'm going to try to do once a week. Part of the reason is because I want to do this podcast in part so that you can all help me keep accountable. Knowing that I have to do this, I hope is going to motivate me to do um, the crazy amount of knitting that I have planned for myself, which I will talk about in just a minute. And so weekly is my goal. Um, and I'm going to give all the contact information for the podcast 
at the end, uh, there will be a Ravelry group. There is going to be a website where uh, you'll be able to get these episodes in the show notes. And all that information I'm going to put in the credits at the end of the episode. Okay, so I mentioned the crazy amount of knitting that I am planning to do in the near future. And the main reason for the crazy amount of knitting, well, sort of. The main reason for the crazy amount of knitting is because there's a lot of things I want to knit. But I am also in the Harry Potter Knitting Crocheting House Cup group on Ravelry. And so if you're not familiar with the Harry Potter Knitting Crocheting House Cup, this is a game uh, that's played on Ravelry and obviously based on the Harry Potter universe, uh, people who play are sorted into houses into the four houses, uh, Ravenclaw, Gryffindor, Slytherin, and Hufflepuff that are the canon houses. I'm sorted into Ravenclaw. And what happens in this game is that the t there's terms. Each term lasts three months and there's a one month break in between terms. And the current term just started on September 1st. For each month of the term, there are eight classes available and you can complete up to six of them for points. The classes are things like herbology, um, or flying, or ancient runes, the subjects that the students at Hogwarts might be taking. And there are prompts, and every month there's a different prompt in the class. So if, let's say, herbology is one of the classes, there'll be a prompt for September, a prompt for October, a prompt for November, and you have one month to complete and turn in the assignments. In addition to the classes, there are also advanced studies, including owls, newts, and the order of the phoenix. Owls, there are 12 subjects, and each subject, again, has multiple uh, options for how you can meet the requirements of that subject and an owl is something that will you have three months from the first day of term September 1st through the last day of term November 30 to complete your project and you have to submit a proposal which the professors for that have to approve and then you start crafting to finish that. A newt is you have to have completed four owls successfully and then you actually have four months to craft a newt. It starts during the break month. So in this case, it was August 1st through November 30. And a newt encompasses two of the owl subjects um, in some way. And again, there are requirements for, in order to meet the herbology newt, you have certain requirements. And then let's say you're doing it with ancient runes, you have other requirements for ancient runes, and your project has to meet both sets of requirements, and you get four months to craft. The Order of the Phoenix is um, something that is going to take you six to eight weeks to craft. Again, you submit a proposal which is called a broom, and in your proposal, because these are order missions and they're supposed to be a level of secrecy, they're less detailed than owl missions, and there's different prompts each term, and um, you know, there's about six different categories each term that you can craft something for, and your project should take six to eight weeks to complete. In addition, there's also Quidditch, and Quidditch tra changes every term. Um, this term, there is a task called Explore the Positions, so the different um, positions that are on the Quidditch team, like the Keeper and the Chaser and the Beater and the Seeker, and for each of those categories, it's a different number of projects with a minimum um, yardage requirement. And then you have um, a certain number of points per project. And regardless of which one you choose to do, your maximum available points is 150. Um, but in some cases, it's two projects to get to the 150 points or versus 15, so it's just whether you want to do small or large things. And then there's three other challenges in Quidditch, uh, only one of which one of which is currently going on, 
Um, and each of these, those separate, I'm sorry, the, I should have said the one for the exploring the positions started September 3, and I forget when the end date is, it's in early November. So you get two months to do that. And then the other three challenges are smaller challenges that run for two weeks each and have their own individual prompts with criteria that you need to meet. So before the term started, I went ahead and made myself a, um, I, I chose all of the projects that I was going to do during the term. And so I made this graphic here that I'm going to insert here so that you can see it uh, explaining what my projects are. And i got to move Pop because he's sitting on my copy that I'm going to talk off. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. Okay. So as you can see here, I have columns for each of the three months of term and a list of what I'm going to do for each of the categories. Now, I should have said this already, but if you know me and you, in person and you're someone with, who might expect to receive a Christmas gift from me, you should probably stop watching now unless you don't really care about knowing what your Christmas gift is because a lot of what I'm knitting this term is Christmas gifts. So, <laughs> as you can see, uh, I dyeing a skein of yarn is one of my what something I want to do for one class every term. I'm just learning how to dye. Um, for the last couple of months I have been doing um, samples you know whenever I have time I've been doing like half gram, half gram pieces of yarn that I'm dyeing um, just to understand how the dyes work and all of that and so with my classes uh, for this term, I want to expand on that and start learning what happens when I work with a full skein of yarn uh, and try some different methods of applying the dye to the yarn. So I'm going to explore that. And always, for the classes, you can do any of the Ravelry approved crafts. So that's knitting, crocheting, dyeing, and spinning. And the people who write the prompts, the professors for each class, they give you some ideas of how those different um, crafts can be used to meet the requirements. Sometimes they'll have something special for spinners or dyers uh, describing exactly what they want you to do or, you know, sort of the parameters. Um, and sometimes it's more up to your interpretation of how you can get your project to meet the prompts. Oh, and I, I think I left out weaving. Knitting, crocheting, weaving, spinning, dyeing. All of those um, can be used for any of the classes. You'll see I have a Quinn bag on here for one class per month. That is something I'm making for Christmas presents this year, and I've already completed five or six of them. I have another six-ish to go, and so that's something I'm working on for classes this month. The dishcloth, um, I'm just learning how to crochet. One of my friends uh, taught me how to crochet a couple of months ago, and so far I've completed two projects, uh, both dishcloths, using a pattern that she gave me, and you'll see one of them in just a minute because it's a project I just finished last week. But those dishcloths are crochet to help me practice my crocheting skills. Um, let's see, the kitty pies, because I've made one kitty pie that one of my cats sleeps in all of the time, and the others would like their own. The crowns, I'm making, uh, those are also Christmas gifts set for the children of my cousins, and I think I have to make six of them. I think that's right. So I'm doing those for class. Is Then you'll see where it says class six that I'm doing various shawls. Detention, detention are um, projects that you started before the month but you finished during the this month. So uh, mo some people line up projects for detention. Some people know they're just not going to finish everything that they have on their plate this month and then they do one of those for detention the next month. But I actually have three Quinn bags that I've finished the bodies of that I need to do the handles on and then do all the finished work to weave in the ends and and um, 
so the handle on and all of that. So my, I'm doing an owl this term. I'm doing an even star. I'm a little scared by that. I haven't started yet and it's already September 10th. Hmm. So I'm really scared about doing that in this time frame, but I'm going to try. As the Ravenclaws say, if you're going to fail, fail spectacularly, and the even star is pretty spectacular way to fail. And it's not really a failure as long as I finish it eventually, right? So that's what I'm going to do. For my Phoenix, I am going to knit my first pair of socks ever. All this time that I have been knitting, and I have never knit a pair of socks. Feels like a failure. So I'm going to knit socks. And then for Quidditch, I'm going to knit monsters. One of my cousins works at Connecticut um, Children's Hospital in Hartford, Connecticut. That's actually the hospital where my sister was born. And my cousin works on a floor where um, the kids have chronic illnesses. These are illnesses that are require repetitive long-term care. Some of the pa patients are there for weeks and months at a time while they're receiving care. They also have other patients who come in and out of the hospital, so maybe they need periodic care and they're there while they're receiving that care um, and then they're home the rest of the time. And so I'm gonna, I wanna make some, I wanted to do something that I could give to her to bring to work, to give to the kids on her floor. And so I decided to do monsters because every kid in the hospital needs a stuffy. So for all of the Quidditch prompts this term, my plan is to make monsters. You'll see there's a headmistress, the HMC there stands for headmistress challenge. At some point in the term, uh, the headmistress of the Harry Potter and Knitting Crocheting House Cup issues a challenge. Sometimes it's a crafting challenge, not always. Last term, it specifically was not a crafting challenge. And so she wanted pictures of ways that you were doing projects other than yarn crafting. Were you making interesting food? Were I actually, um, my husband built some bookshelves and so I took pictures of me polyurethaning the bookshelves as one of the things that I did. I should say, this is actually, I'm a first year. Uh, I had played in the cup before, back in 2010, for a couple of terms, but a lot has changed in the way that the game works since then. And I also um, hadn't played in a couple of years. I felt like I wanted to start as a first year again, and so I was sorted, I asked to be sorted as a first year. And so I was, and I'm really excited about that. I'm back in Ravenclaw House, where I belong, and I am, Uh, excited to be there and anyway I'm a first year even though I have played before okay so after so this graphic that you've been looking at I did this before the term started the other thing that I did before the term started was I gathered everything I was going to need to make the patterns that are listed on that graphic. And that's what this bag here is for. I've been seeing the corner of this, but now it's time to get it out. And I'm gonna just take one or two things out of here as a sample. I'm not gonna take everything out of here, but this is what I did. So I have everything in a Ziploc bag. This happens to be the Even Star, um, the owl bag. And so you see it's labeled Owl, and it has the yarn in it, it's got the pattern in it, and most of them have the needles in it too, but for some reason this one doesn't. I'm going to have to find the needles because I'm starting this in the next day or two. Um, most of them have the needles in the bag too. And so that is um, what I did for every project. Ooh. My doorbell's about to ring. 
UPS is here with my weasel of wrath. I'll be back. Okay, so that was the UPS man. And he was delivering a package to me from Amazon. And there were two things in the package, both of which I think you might find interesting. The first was this book, Squid and Octopus, Friends for Always. And somebody in Ravenclaw Tower had mentioned this book. And in here, Squid and Octopus are knitting. And, oh, here's the picture. Here's the octopus knitting. Ooh, I'm so jealous. Look at that. One, two, three sets of his tentacles with different projects on each one. Man, that would make it much easier to get my knitting done. Um, the Ravenclaws have a bit of an obsession with cephalopods, and that includes me. I love cephalopods. I especially love octopi. Um, in February of 2012, we were in Seattle. My husband had a meeting at Microsoft. He's a software developer, so he's there for a conference, and I tagged along and did my own thing while he was in meetings all day, and um, including going to the aquarium, and I just took so many pictures of the Octopi at that aquarium. They were so interesting. The w they just the way that their tentacles made shapes and the way that they moved and they changed color after they had eaten. Before they ate, they were like this dark red and then afterwards they were like this beigey pink color and I was fascinated with the octopi. It took so many pictures. So anyway, when this book was mentioned in the common room, I had to have one. Knitting octopus, I mean really. The other thing in there was the Weasel of Wrath. Isn't he adorable? He's a beanie baby. And one of the um, people in, the, in Ravenclaw had commented in there that she was looking at a pile of books that were on her desk and she misread one of the titles as the Weasel of Wrath. So it became a kind of a joke and people were talking about somebody needs to write this story and I have now become obsessed with the Weasel of Wrath, and I rewrote my owl proposal as a contract between me and the Weasel of Wrath. Um, I should have said earlier in my About Me section, I didn't, that I am an attorney by training, although I'm not currently working, as I had said. And so, um, yeah, every turn-in that I do for every class, every prompt that I write for, I and required to mention the weasel of wrath and therefore I needed to have a weasel and I thought about knitting or crocheting when ooh, sorry weasel um I thought about knitting or crocheting one but as you can see I have a lot of other projects that I would want to do and so I decided I would see if I could buy one and then I saw this little guy on Amazon that is like this is perfect. And oh, it says his name is Runner. And oh, it doesn't say anything about him. Oh well. But yes, this little guy will be making an appearance in many, maybe all, of my project turn in this year. I Now I will talk a little bit about the projects that I have on the needles and where I am in meeting the goals of this term uh, of meeting doing these classes. So the first thing here, this is the oops, it's inside out. Let me just turn it right side out so you can see it. But this is the body of a Quinn bag. I love this pattern so much. Um, if you have not made it, this prop, this is a free pattern. It's available on Ravelry, and of course I will link it in the show notes. It came out in, I think it was 2008, and I've been in love with it, and my when I saw it, I immediately wanted to knit this as Christmas presents for the women in my family. And I hadn't, because my schedule's been a little crazy for a while, I hadn't done that. I had several that I had started but not finished and so this year I decided this was going to be the year of the Quinn bag and so I finished the ones I had. I've knit three or four others. I don't know. I've lost track at this point. 
But this is the body of it. And as you can see, it's a lot of cabling, but don't be scared. It looks like a lot of cabling, but it's really, it's a good project. I hadn't done, I had done some cable, but it had been a long time. Uh, like I said, the second project I ever did was a cabled baby blanket, and I don't think I had done any cables since then um, until I started doing this queen bag. Then now I've used this project, these bags, to teach me how to cable without using the cable needle, which is scary, but much easier once you get the hang of it. And these are pretty fast. I can do one of these clean bags in something like 15 to 20 hours of knitting time, of crafting time, and that includes from cast on all the way through finishing weaving in the ends. And what happens with this is you knit this top band first and you knit it flat, you knit it this part flat and then it seamed together, then you pick up the stitches along the edge and you knit down. And then the handle, which for this one, I am working on the handle, I'll probably finish this project today, actually. Um, I know this looks like a mess. Cat is licking my hair. <laughs> um, so this is the handle, and you cast on eight stitches, and then you do four strands of two stitch eye cord and then you um, braid them together. I do a four stranded braid. Um, so I, I like eye cord. I know a lot of people don't but it's one of those things that you can I can do really quickly. And what I do with the eye cord, you know usually people use their um, really Um, most of the time people use uh, their <laughs> double pointed needles for this, but I don't, I don't really have a lot of double pointed needles. I use my interchangeable needles basically for everything. And so what I do is you just need an end that you can knit off of. You don't need both ends to be sharp. And because of that, I just use the tips of my interchangeable needles to do the eye cord and so I knit on that and then slide it down and it works. So this project I started, I think I started this September 3, September 2 or 3, and so that's what I did. And this was when I was in New Jersey the first week of September um, visiting my mother-in-law and I brought three projects with me. I brought this one which had not been started at all. I brought another um, Quinn bag which I will show you in a minute which is my detention project for this month which I had started in August and then I brought the yarn to do the crochet um, dishcloth. So this one, I have, I, I put both of these projects in here when I was coming back from New Jersey. Um, so this is the other Quinn bag and I took a photo on September 1st of where I was with this project so I could submit that with the detention so you could see how much I had done. And I don't remember exactly where it is, but I will insert that picture here so you can see it. I think it was somewhere, something like this on September 1st um, at about this point, and so I knit all this. And I haven't started the handle on this one at all. But both of these projects, both of these queen bag handles are going to be done this week. So the other project that I have done, and as you can see, the ends need to be woven in, but this is totally done. And this is a ladder stitch dishcloth, and this is the crochet project that I had mentioned and this is my second ever crochet project. I did try to teach myself to crochet back when I was 19 years old at the same time I taught myself to knit and what was happening was every time I turned the work I and the row ended up being one stitch shorter. I don't know what I was doing wrong and I never tried to go back again. 
And mostly, most of the things I, I like to craft, I prefer how they look in knitting, but there are certain things that I think are easier or I prefer, I imagine, not being a crocheter, I imagine are easier in crochet, especially things like stuffed toys um, and something like this, dish cloth where it seems pretty fast. And if I've never really been inclined to do a, an afghan or a blanket or anything like that, but if I was, I think it would be faster in crochet. So I wanted to learn how to crochet so that I could maybe expand a little bit on the repertoire of what I do. Um, so anyway, crochet dishcloth just needs the ends woven in. So those three things, um, these are the things I've been working on for since the beginning of the month. And I have one other thing which all I have done so far is cast on the Anna's shawl. There it is. Literally all that's done, all that's been done is the cast on. I had, this is actually the second time I cast this project on. I had gotten the first two rows done um, and I was starting on the third row and it just was really floppy and weird and I was having a hard time with it. And so, okay. I'll scratch that. Um, and so I ripped it out and I just cast this on last night. It took a long time to cast on, 363 stitches um, to cast on. And so I watched Project Runway and cast on 363 stitches. It took almost the entire episode. So this is, I'll be working on this. And then um, I also need to cast on the Even Star. And get some work because my my goal was to front load the work on the even star um, we'll be gone during the week of Thanksgiving here in the US and I want to be able to have be done with the even star before that I also I'm proposing my owl with no beads on it I would like to do the beads and I'm hoping that I can have all of even star done by the end of October except for the edging so that I can do so that will give me three weeks to do the edging with the beading but Pat is trying to climb into the box that the um, from Amazon that I left on the floor over there I should have known better anyway so if there if I have any hope of doing the beads on even star at all I need to be done with everything other than the edging by the end of October um, and so I really got to get on the stick. My goal was to do 10% of the even star knitting each week um, up until I got to the edging uh, and I haven't even started it yet so I'm a week and a half behind on that. I need to get it started. Anywho, so what you should expect to see next week are two finished queen bags, that dishcloth with the ends woven in, some serious progress on this Anna shawl and some really, really serious project progress on the Even Star. And the other thing that I need to do is to um, do my first Quidditch pro project. There's a prompt right now, Get to Know Your Nimbus. And because the Nimbus was the uh, premier room at the time that it was purchased for Harry, the goal is to, the, the prompt is to craft something that is luxurious or high end. And so, it, and that has to be done before September, September 16th. So that's next Monday. So by the time I record another podcast, that project should also be done. So I'm not showing you any finished projects this week, but by next week you should see at least four finished projects. And a lot of progress on Enostar and a lot of progress on this shawl. And that's a lot of work, holy cow, that's a little scary. And now you can see why I'm doing this podcast, like I said earlier, as a way to help keep me accountable because if I have to sit in front of this camera every week and tell you what I've accomplished in the last week towards my goals, um, it's going to be an incentive for me to actually accomplish some stuff. So, thanks for your help. Well, I guess that's everything for this week. 
Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to reach me, you can reach me um, on Ravelry. I am Green Girl. And I should have said this earlier, my last name is Green, has an E on the end of it, so G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. So when I tell you my username is Green Girl, Green has the extra E there too. So it's G-R-E-E-N-E, G-I-R-L. -E -E um, I do have a Plark account. I never use it. I, didn't, I haven't figured out how to use Plark yet. Maybe eventually I will. I don't really use Twitter. I have a Facebook account, but for now... I am going, that's just going to be personal. I may make a Facebook group for the podcast, but I haven't decided on that yet. I'll let you know if I do. And there will be a Ravelry group for this um, podcast, and so that'll be through the Yarny Curtain um, group on Ravelry by the time I get this posted. There's not one yet, but by the time I get this posted. And that is all for this week. I will see you next week with a report on... How I'm coming, even though it's a little scary. All right, see you soon.